There's something neat in a cabbage tree hat when it fits the wearer's crown. There's in it a sort of jaunty look with its streamers hanging down. Let others boast of the felt or brab, I cannot with them agree. For nobody looks so like a swell as a man with a cabbage tree. Go where you will, round Lambing Flat, every digger wears his cabbage tree hat. Go where you will, now think of that. You're right if you've got a cabbage tree hat. Let the roughs and muffs talk as they will of the rowdy cabbage tree mob. It's no paltry tile that costs a pound and just to adorn your knob. Roam as you will round Sydney town, the lasses will all agree. You're just the man who has scored them out if you've got a good cabbage tree. Go where you will, round Lambing Flat, every digger wears his cabbage tree hat. Go where you will, now think of that, you're right if you've got a cabbage tree hat. The rich look down on the poor man's coat, if but seed it appear. But a cabbage tree hat is a different thing, for it's free from a wealthy sneer. New chums will wear it to ape old hands and get bush logic pat. Yet where would they be, twixt you and me, if minus the cabbage tree hat? Go where you will, round Lambing Flat, every digger wears his cabbage tree hat. Go where you will, now think of that, you're right if you've got a cabbage tree hat. There's a land that bears a well-known name, though it's not a little spot. Tis the place from whence these Chinamen came, and who shall aver that it's not? All I can say, so help me, Bob, I think I'm not far wrong. These coves with pigtails round their knob To that spacious land belong It's a curious country, deny it who can Tis the native home of a Chinaman It's a curious country, deny it who can It's the native home of a Chinaman the Chinese trying themselves to free from oppression's galling chain. For they're under the Tartar dynasty, but no longer they remain. The emperor a duty puts on tea, silk goods and rice. But on the Chinese coconuts, he seems to set no prize. Tis a jolly rum country, deny it who can, where they'll chop off the head of a Chinaman. Tis a jolly rum country, deny it who can, where they chop off the head of a Chinaman. When John first came to the colony, he subsisted alone upon rice. But being well off he buys, you see, fowls and pigs no matter what price. And sometimes mounted on a horse, through the diggings he will ride. And John at the blackguard boys looks cross when they tell him to get inside. He's in a rage, deny it who can, when insults offered to a Chinaman. He's in a rage, deny it who can, when insults offered to a Chinaman. 
The Chinaman traverses the wide world all through the diggings him you'll find Staggering under a big bamboo while his big tail hangs behind Should a stranger be inquisitive and to him questions try a vacant stare then John will give And no sabby he'll reply He's a peaceable fellow, deny it who can And there's many worse than a Chinaman He's a peaceable fellow, deny it who can And there's many worse than a Chinaman Some time ago a very old hand Who'd been some years in Van Diemen's land In wedlock one day fast was tied To a female from the t'other side By tooralooralooralooral Tooralai tooral rifle tooralay On the Bendigo they stayed a while Till they'd made a pretty decent pile At digging he'd been a lucky dog And she'd done a fine stroke by selling grog By tooralooralooralooralooralooralooralooralooralooralooralooralooralooralooralooralooralooralooralooralooralooralooralooralooralooralooralooralooralooralooralooralooralooralooralooralooralooralooralooralooralooralooralooralooralooralooralooralooraloo
Oh, don't you remember the school Ben bought and the master so kind and so true and the little nook by the clear running brook where we gathered the flowers as they grew. The school has gone to decay now, Ben Bolt, and the running brook is now dry. And of all the friends who were schoolmates then, there remain Ben but you. I'm sure there's no melody equaled on earth, no instrument ever yet seen. So full of live music and exquisite mirth as a good old quartz crushing machine. The stampers are pounding away at the store to make it its treasures unfold. Till at last the result of its labor is shown in a cake of bright beautiful gold. So hurrah for the greatest invention on earth On whose labors all industries lean The cradle where all kinds of wealth has its birth The good old quartz crushing machine Then the guesses of all of the diggers around As to what the first crushing would show And perhaps a good offer was made on the ground For the tailings all scattered below I'm married and now a large family I've got The happiest ever yet seen And I'm proud to assure you each one of the lot Is marked with a crushing machine So hurrah for the greatest invention on earth On whose labors all industries lean The cradle where all kinds of wealth has its birth The good old quartz crushing machine Dear me, how this place is advancing. What it will come to, I'm sure I don't know. The way folks are building is truly entrancing. They've altered the fashion on old Bendigo. Lands advertised every day for selection. Quartz reefs still keep up their fabulous yield. Brick houses spring up in every direction. And canvas is beaten quite out of the field. Of course, now on Sandhurst, we go on improving. In the great march of progress, we're first in the race. Our motto, of course, is just push on, keep moving, for Bendigo's bound to become a great place. Publicans realize their expectations and find their best game after all selling grog. Then turning squatters, they purchase small stations and impounding stray horses they go the whole hog Lord Baron down thanks to brandy and sherry has got a fine station and like a king rules and then there's the owner of charming Muskerry who made all his fortune by selling old tools of course now on Sandhurst we go on improving in the great march of progress, we're first in the race. Our motto, of course, is just push on, keep moving, for Bendigo's bound to become a great place. Old Mother Stiggins, who kept a small shanty, was fined for grog selling some three years ago, has built a nice villa and lives now in plenty, and votes blue-shirted diggers quite vulgar and low. If you converse about Kangaroo Gully, she'll wince, for it touches her up on the raw. And she'll say while a frown her fair visage will sully, that she made all her fortune by keeping a store. Of course, now on Sandhurst, we go on improving. 
in the great march of progress we're first in the race our motto of course is just push on keep moving for bendigo's bound to become a great place fine handsome shops everywhere are erected where new goods from london and paris you'll see but of course that is only what would be expected for ladies will go it to get finery jackson will tempt them as much as he's able tries hard to sell them a splendid silk dress and francis allures them with his shilling tables walking into their purses with splendid success of course now on sandhurst we go on improving in the great march of progress we're first in the race our motto of course is just push on keep moving for bendigo's bound to become a great place Tis of a wild colonial boy, Jack Doolan was his name. Of poor but honest parents, he was born in Castle, Maine. He was his father's only hope, his mother's pride and joy. And dearly did his parents love their wild colonial boy. He was scarcely 16 years of age when he left his father's home And through Australia's sunny clime a bushranger did roam He robbed the wealthy squatters, their stock he did destroy And a terror to Australia was the wild colonial boy in 61 this daring youth commenced his wild career with a heart that knew no danger no foeman did he fear he stuck up the beechworth mail coach he stopped judge mcavoy who trembling cold gave up his gold to the wild colonial boy he bade the judge good morning and he told him to beware that he'd never rob a hearty chap who acted on the square and never to rob a mother of her only son and joy or else he may turn outlaw like the wild colonial boy one day as he was riding the mountainside along Listening to the little birds their pleasant laughing song Up rode three mounted troopers, Kelly Davis and Fitzroy With a warrant for the capture of the wild colonial boy Surrender now, Jack Doolan, sir, you see this three to one Surrender in the Queen's name, sir, you are a plundering son. Jack drew a pistol from his belt and waved that little toy. I'll fight but not surrender, cried the wild colonial boy. He fired at Trooper Kelly then, who fell dead to the ground. In return from Davis he received a mortal wound All shattered through the jaw he lay Still firing at Fitzroy And that's the way they captured him The wild colonial boy sing you now a little song and you must understand tis of a fine young gentleman who left his native land bade his ma and pa farewell and travelled brave and bold on a ship of fourteen hundred tons to come and look for gold to come and look for gold His dress was spicy as can be, his fingers hung with rings, white waistcoat, black silk pantaloons, and other stylish things. His birth was in the cuddy, which is on deck, you know, and all the intermediates. He noted deuced low, he noted deuced low. When the vessel left the London docks, most jovial did he seem. 
But all the waves had changed came all the spirit of his dream. His ruddy cheeks turned very pale, his countenance looked glum, and with a mournful sigh said he, I wish I'd never come, I wish I'd never come. But the ship at length cast anchor, and he was glad once more. Six large trunks he then packed up and started for the shore. His traps filled quite a whale boat, of course I needn't say, that for the freight thereof he had a tidy sum to pay, a tidy sum to pay. In Melbourne town he then put up at the Criterion Hotel. If you've been there you know the place and the charges pretty well. He played at billiards half the day and smoked and lounged about Until a hundred pounds he'd brought had precious near run out Had precious near run out With five pounds in his pocket then he went to Bendigo But when he saw the diggings they filled his heart with woe What must I venture down this hole and throw up filthy clay If my mother should but see me now Whatever would she say, whatever would she say But he went and bought a shovel and a pick and dish as well But to every ten minutes work he took an hour's spell the skin from off his fair white hands in blisters peeled away And thus he worked and sunk about six inches every day Six inches every day When off the bottom just a foot he got quite out of heart He threw his pick down in a rage and off he did depart But when he'd left his hole and gone a cove named Sidney Bob Stepped into it and soon took out a pretty handsome lob A pretty handsome lob With five bob in his pocket then he departed in disgust And then he went upon the roads as many a young swell must if through the black forest you ever chance to stray, you may see him do the government stroke at eight bob every day, at eight bob every day. Morning was bright and the sun's golden light made the diggings look cheerful and gay. When the inspector of traps says, now me fine chaps, we'll go license hunting today. The commissioner across his magnificent horse rode off a short way in advance. While the bobby spread out in order, no doubt, not to give the poor diggers a chance. A tall, ugly trap, he espies a young chap. Up the gully a cutting like fun So he quickly gave chase But it was a hard race I assure you the digger could run Down a hole he went pop While the bobby up top Says just come up shaking his staff Young man of the crown If you want me come down I'm not to be had with such charm Of course you'd have thought he'd have followed and brought the fugitive out of his hole. But the peeler, it's clear, he had no idea of burrowing the ground like a mole. And wiser by half, he just put up his staff, and as onwards he rode, sang he. When it goes down a drive, whether dead or alive, he can stay there till doomsday for me. You doubtless read the papers, and as men of observation, of course you've watched the progress of Chinese immigration. Four thousand of these peak tail chaps in Adelaide are landing. And why they let such numbers come exceeds my understanding. Bow, wow, wow. Tolly, rolly, righty, hidey, bow, wow, wow. Now, some of you may laugh, perhaps, but tis my firm opinion. This colony someday will be under Chinese dominion. They'll upset the Australian government. The place will be their very own. An emperor with a long pigtail will sit upon the throne. Bow, wow, wow. Tolly, rolly, righty, hidey, bow, wow, wow. 
Melbourne will be the seat of power And then tis my impression Of the stations up the country They'll quickly take possession The squatters will be used as slaves By the celestial nation And growing tea or rice will be The only compensation Bow, wow, wow Tolly, rolly, righty, hidey, bow Mandarins will seize for wives the fair Australian girls From Melbourne to the diggings they'll cut lots of canals For fear the coves of New South Wales should pay a hostile call Between this colony and that no doubt they'll build a wall Bow, wow, wow Tolly, rolly, righty, hidey, bow, wow this picture perhaps is overdrawn, however, who can say that all these things will not take place if we let them have their way? If it comes to pass these English songs away, I'll quick be flinging and learn their language and come out in comic Chinese singing. Bow, wow, wow. Tolly, rolly, righty, hidey, bow. Oh, the days when we went shepherding a long time ago And precious lazy days they were, as most of you well know At nine o'clock each morning to the holes we would repair To joke and chaff and have a laugh with other shepherds there T'was thus we passed the hours away in pastime very slow in the days when we went shepherding a long time ago The days when we went shepherding a long time ago The first thing we'd pitch out about for shovels full of soil Then all knock off and have a spell from this laborious toil To a grog shop then we would repair to drink with other chaps If they were out for licenses with Dan and Joe the traps T'was thus we passed the hours away in pastime very slow in the days when we went shepherding a long time ago The days when we went shepherding a long time ago And when we'd had our nobbler to the holes away we'd cut With a pack of cards to have a game of cribbage, whist or putt We left at twelve, came back at two, what gave us most delight Was to see a crowd which plainly showed two coves were going to fight T'was thus we passed the hours away in pastime very slow In the days when we went shepherding a long time ago The days when we went shepherding a long time ago And when the fight was over we'd return back one by one And four o'clock would come and see our daily labour done But often after shepherding for many and many a day We'd find the blessed line had slewed and gone the other way T'was thus we passed the hours away in pastime very slow in the days when we went shepherding a long time ago The days when we went shepherding a long time ago They want to stop our puddling, as many of you know Contractors say that of our slush there is an overflow But if they stop us they'll be sure to injure Bendigo Drive on, my lads, hi-ho, wash on, my lads, hi-ho, for who can lead the life that we jolly puddlers do? Why have our escorts fallen off the question, pray don't shirk? It's because it's been so dry and our machines have had no work. Tis puddling, not quartz reefing, now that keeps up Bendigo. Drive on, my lads, hi-ho, wash on, my lads, hi-ho, for who can lead the life that we jolly puddlers do? The winter soon is coming and our dams will then be full We'll run the stuff through the machines and then we'll have a pull And in its pristine glory we'll shine forth Bendigo Drive on my lads hi-ho, wash on my lads hi-ho For who can lead the life that we jolly puddlers do? The days of tub and cradle, alas, alas, are past An ounce to every tub, of course, was far too good to last But still we get a crust, for now we wash the stuff below Drive on, my lads, hi-ho, wash on, my lads, hi-ho For who can lead the life that we jolly puddlers do? When 
paddling ceases, for all here twill be a bitter cup. Heffernan and Thatcher too may both of them dry up, and to some other diggings they both will have to go. Drive on, my lads, hi ho! Wash on, my lads, hi ho! For who can lead the life that we jolly puddlers do? Tis twelve at night, and there upon the camp A foot policeman silent watch is keeping And thus he talks and chuckles to himself Whilst all his brother traps in bed are sleeping The tents I'll stick up next I will not name but I'll go and take an observation And if they're green enough to sell me grog Why then I'll go and lay my information The night is past, the sun resplendent shines As a digger then this trap himself disguises and then he goes into a sly grog store Handles the things and asks their various prices He blithely talks about the Russian war Descants upon the policy of the nation And brings away a bottle of brown stout Then coolly goes and lays an information he enters then another well-known store There as before he pitches them his gammon He buys some fish and asks for Bess's ale To help wash down the tin of pickled salmon The man completely taken off his guard Supplies the bitter without hesitation and having done a jolly morning's work, the trap goes off and lays an information. Next morning the delinquents there are seen, up at the court with blank and dismal faces. And soon the sitting magistrates come in. And on the bench they take their various places They have to fork out fifty pounds, of course And view the trap with bitter indignation Who in conviction pockets his five notes Besides his pay for every information Oh, Stephen Kane was a nice young man And he went to Bendigo In the days when Eagle Hawk was young About three years ago And he rose with a cock at five o'clock And toiled until it was late And fortune kindly smiled on him For he took out twelve pounds weight And he sang hurrah for the nuggets so bright Hurrah for a digger's life I like this country so vastly well I'll go and look for a wife Then he took his lob down to town Along with another pal And then kept open his weather eye To look out for a nice young girl but he couldn't find a lass to his mind Among lots of every size Some with carroty hair, some dark, some fair And some with gravy eyes And they sang hurrah for this jolly young brick Who the right thing means to do Hurrah for his cash which he means to flash And hurrah for his nuggets too 
society at length caught sight of a very nice young maid. Home with her he walked and most lovingly talked, and to her his addresses he paid. He told her that he'd just come down from the diggings with a log, and she said in return she'd just landed as one of Mrs. Chisholm's mob. And he popped the question and she agreed to become this digger's wife and they sang her rough a la 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 won't we lead a jolly life then to church they went the very next day and she came out precious flesh and he found his sally identical gal that knew how to spend his cash she bought satin so nice, no matter what price, till their tin ran very low. And he said, my dear, I must go, tis clear for more nuggets on Bendigo. So the very next day he loaded a dray, and to Bendigo they went. And when he arrived, he soon rigged up a very comfortable tent. But a mournful change had come over the spot He hardly knew it again And he found the ground was all torn up And he viewed the drives with pain He saw Chinese like swarms of bees Puddling surface in a tub Pick and spade he plied And his best he tried But he hardly earned his grub and if kind fortune should smile again And I get another lob I'll always steer clear by jingo No fear of this immigration mob Come all you jolly diggers And hardy sons of toil Who've come to dig on Fiery Creek and try to make a pile You labour just as constant as the pendulum of a clock And you pay such great attention to the indicating rock The expert's been to see us but he's done us little good For he said we hadn't got the reef and he knew we never should But his scientific theory has received a gentle knock Since he gave us his opinion of the indicating rock for at 80 feet we've struck it and it's nearly two feet wide And the lucky finder lit his pipe and viewed the reef with pride He could see the gold as plainly as the hands upon a clock And he blessed the day he sunk upon the indicating rock He blessed the day he sunk upon the indicating rock One time I wasn't pleased at home, so high away did go With all me goods and chattels unto Australia row As big as old Dan Lambert I weighed thirteen stone all right And when I returned they took me for half a yard of tripe So now my friends take my advice, never never seek to go Or you will rue the day the day you went unto Australia, oh. A pound of steak is seven bob, twelve shillings for a mop, and two and tuppence halfpenny for a pound of mutton chops, ten and sixpence for an ounce of tea, oh dear, such knobby stuff, and three and sevenpence farthing for half an ounce of snuff. So now, my friends, take my advice, never, never seek to go, or you will rue the day the day. You went on to Australia, oh 57 pounds a year for a house that's got no windows Two and tenpence halfpenny for a nightcap full of cinders Sixpence for a needle made of Australian lead And one and eightpence halfpenny for a dirty skein of thread So now, my friends, take my advice Never, never seek to go Or you will rue the day, the day You went on to Australia, oh They'll charge you seven shillings For a pint of mouldy peas 
Six and ninepence farthing for a pound of rotten cheese. Of going a gold digging, friends, I think I've had me full. May the devil take Australia, I'll live with old John Bull. So now, my friends, take my advice, never, never seek to go, or you will rue the day, the day you went unto Australia home. 